Today, we're gonna to talk about why your ex isn't responding to your text messages and how to get them to do that. So what has always fascinated me is the fact that when I actually take on a coaching client and I'm talking with them and I ask them a simple question, hey, what is your overall goal? They often set these gigantic, lofty, unreachable goals. Oh yes, I wanna get my ex back and then get him to marry me. Or, oh yes, I wanna get my ex back and live together in a house with a white picket fence. Oftentimes these are extremely unrealistic goals to start out with. In fact, I think a better goal that everyone should be starting out with is just simply to have a conversation with your ex. It's something that is very achievable and something that sort of gets you on the board, so to speak, where you can achieve your conversation goal and then, you know, shoot higher and set a new goal a little bit more intense. But what's important is I think we need to make a few caveats to the conversation goal. I don't think you should just have a conversation with your ex. I think your goal should be to have a positive, engaging conversation with your ex. And today, that's what I wanna talk about with you. I wanna look at why your ex isn't responding to your text messages, what goes through their heads when they don't respond to your text messages, and how to get them to respond to your text messages. But before we talk about any of that, the first thing that you should do is figure out first if you even have a chance of getting them back so you know you're not wasting your time. Now on my website, exboyfriendrecovery.com, I've put together a special quiz designed to answer this exact question. It's going to give you an approximate idea of what your chances are so you know if you're wasting your time or not. Now, if you wanna take the quiz, it is super easy. It will take you two minutes. It's free to complete, and all you gotta do is just simply look in the description link below this YouTube video and click on the link you see there. Now, with that out of the way, let's actually start talking about texting and why your ex ignores your text messages and won't respond to them. So over the years, I've determined that there's three primary reasons that an ex will not respond to your text messages or just simply ignore your text messages. So what I would like to do today is actually look at those three reasons and sort of expand on them for a little bit. Reason number one, the lack of a reset factor. For those of you who don't know, I am a big proponent of the no contact rule, but I actually think it has all sorts of far reaching ramifications that you don't even realize. So one of the big reasons we see exes not responding to text messages is the fact that you are often undisciplined in the fact that you reach out to your ex immediately after the breakup because you either want closure or you just want to talk or you're feeling really bad about yourself and you think they can make you feel better and it just creates this emotional vortex that isn't very appealing to someone to get into a conversation with so either they run away from that or they start an argument and you kind of don't have the right timing and after all texting and getting response to your text is a little bit about timing just as much as it is about the contents of the text message itself. So how does the no contact rule play a factor here? Well, if you actually implement a no contact rule, I almost look at it as like kind of pushing a reset button. It helps make sure that the timing is right for them to respond to your text messages and start a conversation positively. Now, is it a guarantee that that will happen? No, it is definitely not. But it is one of the factors that we see that kind of have a reason for why your ex isn't responding to your text messages. So if you haven't used a no contact rule, and I mean gone a full 21 to 45 days of not contacting them, then maybe you have a timing issue for why your ex isn't responding to your texts. Reason number two, you have the eye roll factor. One of my most cherished acronyms is that of the NAT, G-N-A-T, going nuts at texting. So when you go nuts at texting, you create what I like to call the eye roll factor. You know what it is because you've done it to someone in your life. It's sort of like the cycle of natting, I guess. So here's what the eye roll factor is. You are walking around the street one day and you get a text message. Your phone buzzes. The first thing you do is look at it and you see who it's from and you do the eye roll. Now, what causes this eye roll? Well, I kind of already gave you the hint, going nuts at texting, but usually what it means is if you're eye rolling someone or your ex is eye rolling you, would they see a text message from you? It means they cannot stand talking to you, whether that's you've been extremely emotional, you've been extremely argumentative, but most importantly, I think what it means more than anything is they're not having an enjoyable type of conversation with you when they are talking to you. This is why it's really important to implement 
reason number one or factor number one with the no contact rule to make sure the timing is a little bit better because it can allow you to kind of combat this eye roll. Another common reason you'll see someone do the eye roll is because they know when they actually will have to talk to you it will be sort of a disagreeable conversation. I actually do this sometimes with business when I know I'm going to have to talk to someone that's going to cause an argument and I'm gonna eye roll and I'm gonna put it off because I don't want to do it. We tend to, as human beings, just wanna have enjoyable conversation. We don't want conflict in our text messaging conversations. In fact, one of the reasons that I do the eye roll throughout my life is when I know I'm going to get into an argument with the person and I don't want to talk to them. Don't do this to your ex. This is one of the primary reasons they don't want to respond to you. Reason number three, your text messages suck. It's always astounding to me how unprepared people are for this breakup process when it comes to text messages. And I suppose if you really think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Throughout our relationships, one of the primary reasons that a breakup can occur is we grow a little complacent with how things are. We're used to our certain behavioral patterns, our conversation patterns, the way we reach out to each other, it can get a little bit stale. And so ultimately what we find happening for our clients is that when they actually try to reach out to their exes, they don't really put any emphasis or thought into the text message. They text message with a simple, hey, or a what's up, or how are you doing? Nothing that will really spark someone's interest. Like I said, we grew complacent in our relationships and while that was maybe okay to get a response in our relationships, the environment is different now that you're not in a relationship anymore. You're going to have to put more effort into your text messaging. The problem with that is no one ever really teaches you how to do proper text messaging. Luckily for you, that's what I'm gonna do today, but before I actually start talking about the specific ways you should be texting your ex and the overall framework you should be texting them in, I thought it'd be kind of fun to show you some of the literal thoughts that I have personally had when I've ignored conversations throughout my life, because I think this will be informative for any of you who are wondering what's going on in my ex-boyfriend's mind. Now, I think it's important to help you understand that these aren't just about responding to a text message, they also involve kind of existing conversations, meaning I'm in a conversation with someone and they say something or do something that makes me feel like I don't wanna continue this conversation. So what are the exact thoughts going through my mind? Well, ultimately there are three different types of thoughts. The first thought is, this isn't that enjoyable of a conversation. So here's how this looks. I'm in the middle of a conversation with someone. In fact, this happened to me yesterday. I was texting one of my friends, or rather he texted me to catch up about what's going on in the world. And we started talking back and forth and the conversation was kind of okay. And then just somewhere in the middle of the conversation, I thought to myself, you know, this is kind of boring. I, I don't want to text anymore. This is a waste of my time. So I just didn't respond. I just ended the conversation there. So it's important to use that lesson going into your breakup with your ex. You need to understand that when you actually have a conversation with your ex, you need to do things that can continually keep them engaged. And one of the best ways to do this is to find an interest that they are really interested in. Because one of the things that can happen, and this is actually the reason that I stopped that conversation, is we were talking about something that had no interest whatsoever to me. And I'm just not going to have a conversation conversation about something that doesn't interest me. I have more important things to do with my time. Speaking of having more important things to do with my time, that's a perfect transition to the second most common thought I've had over the years on why I wouldn't respond. I just don't have time. I'm too busy. This is why I'm often telling my clients, make sure you're aware of the exact time that you're texting your ex. If you're going to text him in the middle of a work day, where you know for a fact he is not going to be allowed to be on his phone or he's not going to have time to engage in a proper conversation, it's better not to try or expect to have a long lasting all day type conversation in the middle of that period. It's just a matter of timing, like I've been saying so often throughout this video. We are human beings who have very busy lives, and in fact, more so today than ever, there's a million things happening to us, a million people trying to talk to us, there's a million emails coming to our email inbox. You have to find a way to stand out, and one of the worst ways to do that is to be just part of the rush of information. You can get lost in translation, so to speak. So make sure that when you're texting your ex, it's at a time that you know he's open, 
to having a conversation with you. Now, the third literal thought that I've had on why I haven't responded to a conversation is simply thinking all our conversations ever evolve into is drama, and I'm tired of that. While we like watching drama in stories, we often don't like experiencing it throughout our own lives. It creates a certain amount of stress and uneasiness, and if all your ex ever associates you with is drama, it is not a good thing. So this is kind of more important for you to realize and look back on your relationship where all your conversations at the end, all about drama, were they all about fights? Did they always evolve into something that was unpleasing? Because if that's the case, that's all your ex is associating you with right now, and that might be a primary reason for why they're not responding to your text messages. But let's switch gears here and talk about what you need to do to get them to respond to your text messages. So there's a certain framework that we've developed over the years that we've seen work wonders for our clients, but it's important that you understand the framework isn't meant to be followed to a T. Oftentimes you need to be adaptable. That's one of the most important factors we look at in our clients when it comes to success. How adaptable are you? So what is this framework? Well, when we first started out, we thought we would give people exact text messages to use, but what we learned is that when we gave people exact text messages to learn, the reality almost never unfolded the way they would expect. There's too many variables to account for. So instead, what we teach people now is a framework. There are three things that you should be doing or aiming to do whenever you have a conversation with your ex. The first thing is to try to find a way to get your ex to respond to your initial text, then allow a conversation to unfold organically, and finally, you end the conversation first. So really, I'm not going to be talking about the things like unfolding a conversation organically or how to end a conversation first. I've done multiple different podcast episodes and videos on that. I actually just want to focus on today how to start an initial conversation, how to get a response to your initial text message. What do you have to do to stack the odds in your favor? And that's really where the high method comes into play, H-I, standing for hook and interest. So let's start looking at the hook. A hook is something that your ex is going to look at and not do an eye roll. In fact, it will engage him to a point where he'll almost want to respond just because of the hook. So there are many different ways that we can form a hook, but often we find that pattern interrupts work the best. You need to say something that will get his attention. So I'll give you a few examples. I have a confession to make. You won't believe what just happened to me. I have a problem, but only really trust you for an answer. All of these examples are perfect hooks. They're just a way to get your ex hooked into the conversation, engage in the conversation. Next, you need to find a way to extend a conversation and grow it organically, and that's where the interest aspect comes into play. Now, I've already mentioned that we find that people who engage their ex in his interests end up having a lot more success throughout the long run of a texting conversation. So it's important that you try to find a way to meld your hook in your interest. I'll give you an example using the, hey, I have a problem and only really trust you for an answer. Let's say that your ex is obsessed with cameras. And let's say that you went out and bought a new camera, but you know, these new DSLR models are extremely complicated. We don't understand how to use them. We're looking up YouTube tutorials and we're pulling our hair out. And then we realize, oh wait, our ex knows all about them. So he's also extremely passionate. Let's say he's a photographer. It's just really, really nice to be able to just make up a situation off the top of your head, but he's a photographer. So what you can do is literally text him with, hey, I have a really big problem and only really trust you for an answer. To which he'll respond, what is it? And then you go into a camera problem, something that he can easily solve and will engage him in an interest of his. And then once he kind of engages, you can actually allow a conversation to unfold organically. And then if we follow our framework, it's important for you to end the conversation first. Now there are billions of different ways and interests and hooks we can come up with, but I'm gonna actually challenge you guys in the comments of this YouTube video, come up with a few of your best hooks, because this is a collaborative effort between everyone to help each other through our breakup. So what are some of the best hooks you've seen used on your ex. Hey, thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. Again, like I said, if you haven't already, make sure you type down in the comments about the best hooks you've seen work on an ex, on a ex-boyfriend, on a current boyfriend. What are some of the best hooks that you're using right now? 
If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Oh yeah, and take that extra recovery chances quiz I was talking about at the beginning of this video. All you gotta do is just simply look in the description link below this YouTube video and click on it. I'll see you next time.